Hey, are you underemployed or unemployed in your 30s, your 40s, or 50s? You probably ask yourself, should I learn to code? Well, the answer is yes, of course, but I'm going to tell you why. So you're watching this video and maybe you're underemployed or even unemployed in your 30s, your 40s, and your 50s. And you're thinking, what do I do next? What career options are available for me? And you look around on YouTube or in the internet and you find this option called software development or what we know as coding. And you think, hey, is this for me? Is this something that I could do? Well, yes, you definitely can. Now, one thing that you need to consider is being a software developer is different than other positions. You simply can't just apply. Um, typically, you have to have the skills first before you enter the profession. So you're gonna have to go on a learning journey. Now, you may be asking yourself, well, what do I learn? When I go out and look, there's like a thousand options. What do I do? Um, if you have no idea what you need to learn today, as we're recording this, learning web development is the number one job in America. So now that you've decided to learn web, how do I learn? Well, probably if you're in your thirties, forties, or fifties, later on in your career, going to college isn't an option. It's going to take you four years to do it minimum. And it's about a hundred K cash outlay. You may already have a degree. And so those aren't options for you. The options that are probably more beneficial to you is going to a quality boot camp like what we have here at Coder Foundry. And that's going to take you three months of study and probably three months of interviewing to get a job. So three to six months is somewhere you should expect to learn and then interview and land that first job. Now there's other options out there too, where you could do a self-paced style. Self-based is you're directing your education, you're doing it. We have a self-paced option here at Coder Foundry, and that's gonna take you nine to 12 months, maybe less expensive, but it's gonna take you longer to achieve. Now, no matter how you do that, you need to acquire the skills necessary to build full stack web applications. Before you embark on this journey of learning to code and go through the effort of going to a bootcamp, you're probably asking yourself, well, how much money can I really make? You're looking at YouTube and the internet and Twitter, and they're saying you can make $300,000 as a coder. Is that something that I can actually make coming out of a boot camp or self-paced learning? And the answer is probably no. And I want you to set your expectations a little bit lower for your first year in the industry. Now, one thing you should be expect is you're going to make somewhere between 40 and 80,000 if you're in the East Coast over the Midwest, and there may be even higher if you're in, say, California or New York and some of these really large metropolitan areas, the salaries could go higher. But to set you the expectations correctly, it's going to be somewhere between 40 and 80,000 per year. Now, if you have a career, and this is what we're talking about, we want to put you on a path for a career three to five years after your first job, you should expect salaries over 100,000. And that is very common for developers to have three to five years expense. They're making 100, 120 or 150 per year. They're just not doing that straight out of a boot camp. Now, the other thing that may concern you is, especially if you're now unemployed or underemployed, you're thinking, hey, what about this recession here? And sometimes we do have those fears that the economy could take a downturn. But if we look back to 2020, you can see that even when the economy took a massive downturn, developers were still being hired. Now, some of them got laid off for sure, but companies were still hiring developers during that time period. So even if we face another recession here, because every company is interconnected now, it's software developers are mission critical to most companies. Therefore, you're always going to be employed if you're committed to your craft. So, Learn software development it may take you three to five years to get to that high salaries that people are talking about, but I'm putting you on a path for a career, one that is mostly recession proof um, through all ups and downs in our economy. Now, my most important advice here for career switchers, people that are underemployed or unemployed and you've never worked as a software dev is getting experience first. A lot of times they're looking for roles and they're trying to compare their previous role to the current role and they have demands up here or perks up here and they're not really considering what they're doing. Here's what I want you to think about. You are career switching. You're starting over in a brand new career and the most important thing that you can get is one year experience on your resume and you need to approach that in your job search. So if you get an offer and it isn't exactly what you wanted, it's not in the, the right location or it's not in the right industry or 
whatever, you need to take that job for the experience, the money and the career and the options will follow later. And you can build a career, but you can't build a career if you don't take that first role. This is one of the primary things here at Coder Founder we teach students to do is like, hey, if you get an offer, take it because the experience is way more important than the actual money outlay in that first year. Now, the other thing that you can do is bring in your life experience. So if you are switching from a different career, you may have some things that apply to these businesses. And don't forget when you're interviewing, bring up those life experiences. You may have had management experience or you may be working in, say, the trucking industry, but now you're applying for a software development job in the trucking industry. And so those you have an overlap into the job that you're looking for and bring those up. But be humble. Take the first role, expand your search, maybe look at relocating, maybe move to a different city, a different town in order to get that first role. And then once you have it, the world opens up to you. It's a whole lot easier to find the second role than is the first one. So take that first job, get that experience. So now that you've learned and you've decided on that, I'm going to take that first role. The question is, how do I get noticed? The first thing you should be working with a recruiter who help you break into the industry. The second thing is you must have a portfolio of business projects. These need to be hosted. They need to be attractive and something you can demo during the interview process, but definitely something that you push to your LinkedIn profile that so people can see them and say, oh, this person does know what they're doing. I think I'm going to interview that person. So use your portfolio as a sales tool that leads to interviews and then use that during the interview process. So you've went through the process of learning, maybe you're working with a recruiter, you even built out a portfolio of projects and you're interviewing for the first time. I want you to think about this. You're not going to learn everything you need to know from any boot camp or self-paced course or even college if you went there. You are always going to be learning new things. So if you're presented with a coding challenge or something like that, and you're like, hey, they didn't teach me this at my boot camp, that's okay. Take that under advisement. Be willing to learn new things so that you can break into the industry. The other thing I want you to do is, especially if you're a late career switcher and say, they ask you a question, what caused you to learn coding at this age? You know, maybe you think late is 42 or 52 or whatever. Um, here's how I want you to, to tackle those types of interview questions and saying that, you know, I'm a lifelong learner and I saw coding as a profession and as a hobby. And I just decided to undertake it because that's what I like to do. And if you hire me, I'm going to learn not only about the software that I need to write here and the tools and technology that we're using, but also your business, because I'm committed to learning new things and I enjoy it. And that's what I want to do. So if you're committed to that lifelong learning, because you're going to have to be to be successful in this business, you're well on your way to getting that first software job. Hey, one of the big steps we talked about was building a portfolio of business class projects. And I've made a video about projects you put on your portfolio. And if that interests you, then I'll see you over there in the next video.